So. As all of you know, I'm Mary Ann Williamson. I am running for Congress after having a 30-year career here in Los Angeles. I founded an organization here called Project Angel Food, which is a uh, non-medical support services meals on wheels program for people with life-challenging illnesses, uh, particularly AIDS, as it began. And this uh, organization has, has uh, served millions of meals at this point, and even today serves over a thousand meals a day. I also serve on the board of directors of an organization called Results, which is a um, citizens' lobby, a very powerful citizens' lobby against hunger and poverty, both domestically and around the world. And I founded uh, the Department of Peace Campaign, uh, which has uh, spurred citizen involvement and support for a piece of legislation, uh, now sponsored mainly by Barbara Lee in the House of Representatives, originally sponsored by Dennis Kucinich, to establish a department in the executive branch of the U.S. government whose job would be to articulate, facilitate, and research nonviolent problem-solving options for both domestic and international conflict. I'm running in a race where there are 21 candidates. But even though there are 21 candidates, I think there are basically two uh, conversations. And that is why I'm running. I feel that the traditional political candidates are, uh, to a greater or lesser degree, running in order to perpetuate the system as it is. And I am running because I think that something is extremely flawed about the system today. I'm running for Congress because I believe that we are on a de-democratizing role. We are now experiencing in our country a very perilous gap between the principles of democracy on which we stand and the actual behavioral processes and patterns of the U.S. government. I have very, very, very serious problems with the behavior, however, of the U.S. government at this time. We have shrinking civil liberties, we have expanding corporate influence, and we have domestic surveillance. A certain form of global predatory capitalism is like a glob, it's like a blob that's spreading around the planet, and it is threatening to eat our, our country. It is threatening to, to eat our democracy. Uh, because we are at a point where the American people, and the founders did give this country to the American people, we are locked out in too many ways from the basic opportunities that every American should be able to expect. We should expect a certain level of political influence. We should expect a certain level of educational opportunity. And we should expect a certain level of economic opportunity. We should expect that which is reasonable to expect in a country where we have a government of the people and by the people and for the people. Instead, however, today we have a government of a few of the people and by a few of the people and for a few of the people. Because Washington, quite simply, is for sale. We have, ex we have created, at this point, a government in which moneyed interests uh, wield uh, an influence on the functioning of our government that is so disproportionate uh, to the influence that is wielded by the average citizen as to represent a mockery of the Gettysburg Address. This will not change unless the people stand up and change it. It is ridiculous to expect a traditional uh, two-party system at this point, which is so beholden to that money that is necessary in order to get elected and stay elected, it is ridiculous uh, to look to the two-party duopoly uh, to make this change. The people need to step in. Abolition did not emerge from a major party. It emerged from the people, and then a political party took it from there. Women's suffragette movement did not emerge from a major political party. It emerged from people, and then a major party took it from there. The civil rights movement did not emerge from a major party. It emerged from people, and then uh, major parties took it from there. The pro-democracy movement that we need in the United States today can only emerge from people. It is only we, the people, who can interrupt the pattern uh, by which democracy as we know it is being dismantled in front of our eyes. We all know the statistics, but I don't think the average American spends as, as much time and heart space in considering what these uh, uh, statistics actually mean in the lives of real people. It's one thing to point out that because of banking policies and trade policies and tax policies over the last few years, we have siphoned off vast amounts of the material wealth of our country into the hands of a very few people, creating a situation where 1% of our population controls 38 to 40 percent of our wealth, and 60 percent of our population lives on 2.3 percent of our wealth. But the deeper story 
has to do with the unnecessary suffering of so many millions of human beings because of it. Among all the advanced nations of the world, we are second only to Romania when it comes to our child poverty rate. One in five American children live in poverty. One in five American children are food insecure. We also have the highest mass incarceration rate in the world. It's higher than Russia, higher than China, higher than Iran. We have 2.4 million people who are in prison in the United States today, compared to 300,000 during the 1970s. And 500,000 of those in prison today are non-violent drug offenders. And an African-American man living in America today has a one in three lifetime probability of incarceration. I believe that this is morally unacceptable. And that which is morally unacceptable to the American people should matter. It should be factored into our politics. But it's not factored into our politics today because our major political system is so beholden to the, short, to the interests of, of industries whose short-term economic gain has become our new bottom line. And that's why uh, we can't deal adequately with global ch uh, climate change. Uh, and that is because of the power wielded over our politicians by fossil fuel companies. Uh, we do not have uh, uh, the ability to deal adequately with GMOs, herbicides, pesticides, uh, the corruption of our food supply because of the influence that chemical companies and big agricultural companies have over our government. And there's no reason to expect universal health care anytime soon, as long as pharmaceutical companies and health insurance companies are so obviously calling the shots. How do we expect this to change? Now, the abolitionists just rose up and they stood with conviction on something they felt was wrong. Slavery was not acceptable to them. And they stood with conviction on that fact and on that idea. And in that sense, they nonviolently, I might add, resisted a system uh, which had all the power economically, had all the power technologically at that time. There was no reason for the abolitionists to believe that they could end an institution as powerful and economically overwhelming as sl the slave trade. And they didn't say, oh, it can't be done. They just did it. And the same with the women's suffragettes and the same with the civil rights movement. Yeah, I think it's time for us to awaken from our political reverie here. It's time for us to like awaken and see what's going on in our country here. It's time for us to stop being separate citizens. It's time for us to disenthrall ourselves of this kind of mental habit pattern of just watching the political horse race. We, it, politics has become a spectator sport uh, we look at the Republicans and the Democrats like two horses in the race. Uh, they're running the wrong race. Uh, we've got one uh, polit major political party uh, that acts like it's just throwing us off over the cliff. We have another major political party which does what it can uh, to keep us from falling over the cliff. Uh, we need to get out of the vicinity of the cliff. <laughs> and that will only happen if we get money out of our And there are a lot of uh, elements involved in comprehensive reform. I'm sure most people here, if not all of you, are well aware of the very sinister uh, influence of the uh, Supreme Court decision in 2010 called Citizens United. Uh, Citizens United, I think, will go down as uh, probably one of, the, one of the worst of our Supreme Court decisions. Uh, some say, and I agree, a perversion of democracy itself. Because the Supreme Court has basically said to rich people, take the whole thing. And I'm not demonizing rich people. I, I mean, capitalism has been good to me. Uh, I, I do not represent massive wealth or anything like that. But I, I can't complain that the system has not worked for me. I can't say this, however. While it is true uh, that if you're in the club, there's no place better to live, too many Americans cannot get there anymore. Uh, the problem is not that people get rich in America. It's pro the problem is that millions of people fall into poverty in this country every day through no fault of their own. Um, so the problem we have is, especially since the Supreme Court has passed that legislation, uh, we need now comprehensive uh, reform. I have announced publicly that I'm not taking special interest corporate PAC money. I'm not taking lobbyist money. Uh, that's not what this campaign is about. Mine is a grassroots campaign. It is absurd that candidates are taking contributions, political contributions, from industries they will then be asked to regulate. I mean, come on. How much more corrupt could this be? How much more of a system of legalized bribery could this be? We need, however, to work on all these elements of comprehensive reform all the way up to and including a constitutional amendment 
that will outlaw the undue influence of, of money on our politics. It's not easy to pass a constitutional amendment, nor should it be. But it took an amendment to abolish slavery. It took an amendment to give women the right to vote. And I believe it will take an amendment to outlaw the undue influence of money on our politics and to establish that corporations do not have the rights of personhood. There is no reason in the world, and our founders would roll over in their graves, for huge multinational corporations to have more say in what goes on in this country than you and me. That is wrong, that is not democracy, and we need to stop. We have a historic opportunity here. This is the first time this seat has been available in 30, uh, an open seat uh, availability in 38 years. I've been a Democrat all my life, and I've said I would caucus with Democrats, but I simply cannot tell the line anymore. I don't care which major political party it is, it's moving in this corporatist direction, moving in a quite militarist direction, by the way. And this founder, the founders never even mentioned political parties in the, in the founding documents. Uh, George Washington warned us against them. So this is an aberration in our history, that the American people feel everything we ha do has to be filtered through one of two major political parties. Some countries now they have two brands of toothpaste, but they have 14 brands of presidential candidate. How come we have 14 brands of toothpaste and only two brands of presidential candidate? <laughs> what is the game that's being played here? That we have so much choice when it comes to computers, and so much choice when it comes to tennis shoes, and so much choice when it comes to cell phones, it's like we're not supposed to notice the narrowing of our choices on things that matter the most. This isn't going to stop, ladies and gentlemen, unless we stop it. And let me tell you something. When LA acts, it becomes a national trend within five years. If your heart is saying yes to this campaign, I hope you will help me. Because we have, from today, no, from yesterday, nine weeks. And I will only be able to close the uh, name recognition gap that exists between me and the two well-known Democratic candidates. If all of us get on Facebook and get on Twitter, come down to our headquarters, canvas with us, phone bank with us, and give financially whatever is comfortable and you feel moved to give. Um, it's a grassroots campaign, not taking money from the same old, same old. Um, Five dollars, ten dollars, whatever it is. Um, in a grassroots campaign, no, your ten dollars wouldn't win the election, but yours plus that of other people uh, who feel the same way, same way. If we can win this race, when we win this race, uh, this, this race will, will get national attention. And I feel that it would help create a space uh, throughout the country for more people who are willing to say, yeah, I'm going to run as an independent too. And I'm going to run on the platform of getting the money out of politics. Because getting the money out of politics, this is the issue underlying all the other issues. This is the cancer that is eating our democracy. And so we'll never be able to deal with all these other things, whether climate change or the corruption of our food supply or mass incarceration, child poverty, because those are causes, those are effects. And your traditional politician might talk to you about the effect, but we need to talk about the cause. It's not enough to just treat the symptoms, we need to treat the disease itself. And that will come from a, from a people's movement. One uh, congressional win is not going to do it. But let me tell you, one congressional win, especially from Los Angeles, it's going to make a lot of noise, it's going to be highly visible, it's going to help create a space. Because politics, as we know it, the political system as we know it, is dominated by these entrenched, calcified thought forms. And there is a political elite. And they determine, I've, I've heard it over and over again, that uh, I would not win because the Democrats would decide. Democrats would decide who was going to win. Uh, the, the very attitude, that's why I'm running. Uh, they, they talk about how this is a Democratic district. Well, I think the deeper truth is that this is a progressive district. And most progressives are, are Democrats. But I am the most progressive in this race. And I also think that when it comes to the most important issues of all, civil liberties, uh, domestic surveillance, even money in politics, these are not right-left issues. These are American issues. And it's time for us to see past the rules that would divide us left and right and realize that we are, we are people, first and foremost, we're not righties or lefties or libertarians or greens or Democrats or Republicans. We are Americans. And we're not coming together with some transactional you getting yours and you getting yours and you getting yours and you getting yours. That's not why I'm here. I'm not here to ask you to vote for me because if you do, I'll get you this or you that. I'm here to say, hey guys, together, we can do something really beautiful. Really beautiful for our country and really beautiful for the world. And if you send it in Washington, I will try my best to do that.